So <clears throat> this is a picture of Mathieu, and I love to show this picture because he had been in the MRI scanner for more than three hours <clears throat> just when this picture was taken just prior to when this picture was taken. Most people don't look like this when they come out of the scanner after being in there for three hours. Um, so uh, he is uh, someone who is wonderful to have in the laboratory um, because he does uh, this so joyously. And one of the really um, virtues of working with these long-term practitioners is they can have these short periods of meditation where they're generating compassion, and at least by their own report, they're able to do this very easily in the crazy environment of the laboratory while they're lying in an MRI scanner that um, feels like a jackhammer uh, and uh, is producing very loud sounds from the scanner itself. So we've been interested in what brain circuits are recruited when these long-term practitioners voluntarily generate compassion. And I should mention that we compare these to age match controls where we've taught them the same practice. Uh, and actually, Mathieu Ricard developed a training regime that we can offer to novice practitioners who wish to learn the practice. And these are individuals who are interested in meditating, had never done it before, and um, they practiced for one week prior to coming into the laboratory. This is a busy slide, and I'll only walk you through part of it, but one of the brain regions, which is um, strongly modulated by this meditation practice is a very interesting part of the brain. Um, and it's called the insula, and specifically the anterior insula, which is shown in this axial image here. The insula is a region of cortex that is the a part of the brain that is the only part of the brain to contain a viscerotopic map of the body. And what that means is that the visceral organs are actually mapped like, um, like retina topi, like the eye is mapped in the visual cortex. The visceral organs are mapped uh, in the insula. Uh, so this is a region of the brain through which information from the body is conveyed to other circuits in the brain. And it's also a part of the brain that has descending pathways to these different visceral organs and can um, modulate activity in those organs. And what we find is that in the long-term practitioners, they're the ones in red down here, the solid lines are during meditation, the dotted lines are during neutral, the blue lines are the novice practitioners. And what you can see is these are the responses using functional MRI that we detect in the insula when the long-term practitioners are exposed to these negative emotional sounds. And what you can see is a big difference between the dotted line and the solid line in red uh, for the long-term practitioners. It indicates that activity in their insula is being strongly modulated by their meditation practice, whereas in the novices, there's really no difference between the neutral and the meditation periods. Um, and it suggests that the insula is an important piece of the story in terms of how the brain is changed in response to compassion training. Um, there, it's not just the insula, however. There are a number of other parts of the brain that are dramatically altered in function by compassion meditation. And two additional regions are the amygdala, which plays a very critical role in emotion, and um, this area called the TPJ on the right in the right hemisphere. It stands for the temporal parietal junction. And the TPJ has been strongly implicated in perspective taking, and particularly the adoption of another person's perspective. And it's been strongly implicated in empathy. And what we see in all of these cases is that activity in these regions during the generation of compassion is strongly elevated in the long-term practitioners, but not in these novice controls. Now, one of the things we've been doing very recently is this, and I have to tell you a little anecdote before I show you this, this next set of findings. Um, one of the early visits that we made to Dharamsala, India, 
to be with His Holiness um, was a visit where he asked us if we would give a talk uh, to young monks in the Namgyal Monastery, the monastery connected to his residence. And this was a time when Francisco Varela was alive. Francisco it was a, a very eminent neurobiologist who is one of the co-founders of the Mind and Life Institute and who um, developed the idea and um, uh, uh, a hybrid discipline that he called neurophenomenology, which I'll talk about in a little while. Uh, but Francisco was on this visit, and we gave this talk to these young monks in, in the Namgyal Monastery. There are about 200 monks in the audience, all sitting dutifully um, on cushions on the floor. And we had instrumentation with us uh, on that visit, and we thought that instead of just giving a dry academic lecture, we'd actually show them how this stuff is done. And so we put electrodes on Francisco, and we had a laptop, and we were showing him... Um, we were showing the monks uh, the display of brain oscillations, brain electrical activity on the laptop uh, that we can record from a person's head. And uh, when we explained, you know, when we put the cap on to measure the brain activity and, and showed them on the laptop, as soon as we did this, all 200 monks just burst out laughing, just cracking up hysterically. And we thought that they were laughing because the Francisco looked kind of funny with the electrode cap on. It turns out that they were laughing at where we were placing our electrodes. They, were, they thought it was hysterical that we thought that the key to compassion was the head as opposed to the heart. Now, it took us many decades to get back to their editorial comment about our lack of insight. Um, and very recently, we have been interested in how the heart and the brain are actually interconnected during the generation of compassion. And I won't go into this in, in a lot of detail. There are a lot of details to unpack here. Um, and this is some very new work that was just been published in 2009. But one of the... Um, uh, uh, what you're seeing here, one of the really cool things that we can do is actually take MRI scans of the heart itself. Um, and uh, it turns out that there, you can do functional um, MRI of the heart. Uh, and uh, there are a group of uh, radiologists who are now interested in the development of non-invasive methods for probing cardiac function that will eventually eliminate cardiac angiography. And it's done through the use of real-time MRI. And so what you're seeing here is an image of cardiac gated MRI where we gate the MRI scanner um, we record the electrocardiogram in the scanner and we gate the acquisitions to the onset of the main ventricular contraction that we can detect with the EKG recording. And um, this is a slice through the left ventricle. And um, you can compute various parameters of cardiac function um, in this way. And uh, it pr provides some really cool information. And uh, I'll just show you a little bit of this. This is from a new paper. Um, Antoine Lutz is a scientist in our center. And um, uh, if you just look at heart rate, there are a lot of other measures that we can derive. But if you just look at heart rate, uh, it turns out that um, during the uh, generation of compassion uh, among the long-term practitioners, you actually see an elevation of heart rate uh, during the practice itself compared to the novice practitioners. And what's really interesting is this part of the brain called the insula that I mentioned earlier is strongly coupled to the cardiac change in the long-term practitioners and not in the novices. It appears that this um, region of the brain is uh, uh, sensitive to and driving, we think, the cardiac change. And so this is a parameter of coupling that is on the ordinate here. And it just shows you that during compassion, but not during the neutral period, there's much stronger coupling in the expert practitioners uh, in red compared to the novices in blue. Uh, and uh, it suggests indeed that there's something about neurocardiac coupling during compassion, which we think is very important. And uh, this just shows another area of the brain, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, an area of the mid-cingulate region 
uh, which also has been implicated in various kinds of emotional processing, which shows uh, th some of the same kinds of differences as well. Now, one of the things I'm always asked when I talk about this work in long-term practitioners, and I should mention these long-term practitioners are really long-term practitioners. Um, they have to have done a minimum of 10,000 hours of formal practice. Now, um, 10,000 hours was not just a number we pulled out of the hat. Uh, it turns out that for multiple kinds of expertise, sort of entry-level expertise in virtually any complex domain starts at about 10,000 hours. So that's how many hours you got to put in to get to sort of the entry level of expertise. And in our study, the average number of lifetime hours of practice among the long-term practitioners was approximately 34,000 hours of practice. Um, every one of our practitioners has completed at, once, at least once th one three-year retreat where they are practicing a minimum of eight hours a day for three continuous years. Many of them have done multiple three-year retreats. Um, so these are individuals who've really spent a very significant part of their adult life cultivating these qualities. Now, I'm always asked, well, that's really interesting and fine, but there's no way in the world uh, I'm going to put in anywhere near that amount of time. So can short-term training be beneficial? And so the study that I'm about to describe to you is a study that we undertook to examine just that question. And this is a study that is still in the process of being completed. We're analyzing, still analyzing the data. Um, it's being driven by... Um, a wonderfully talented graduate student in my lab by the name of Helen Wang. And um, one of the cool things that we did in this study is to take meditation-naive individuals and offer them two weeks of training, just two weeks. And we did MRI scans before and after this two weeks of training to determine whether just two weeks of training 30 minutes a day actually can produce demonstrable changes in brain function. Moreover, this was a study where when participants signed up, they were told that this was a research project in which they were going to be offered an intervention that's designed to cultivate well-being. We randomly assign people to either a group where they receive compassion training or a group where they receive training derived from cognitive therapy that trains people to cognitively reappraise situations, to appraise them in ways that are more positive. And so this was a true randomized controlled trial. And the other really cool thing about this study is in addition to the participants getting comparable amounts of training, in each case, 30 minutes a day for two weeks, the training was delivered over the internet. Um, and so we developed uh, a, a way to do this over the internet. Participants logged on to a protected website and they received 30 minutes a day of training. Um, the other virtue of having them do this online is that we were able to monitor um, that they were actually doing it because they had to make some responses as they were going along and they, in order to advance from one step of the training to the next, they had to make certain keystrokes. So it enabled us to have some controls over what they were actually doing. So um, this just summarizes some of these key components of the methods. It was two weeks of compassion, uh, daily practice over the internet for 30 minutes a day. The comparison group was taught cognitive reappraisal. The cognitive reappraisal was delivered in the same way, uh, 30 minutes a day over the internet. Uh, we had experts design each of these two trainings, and the experts each believed uh, and each had comparable levels of confidence that the training that they were designing would produce beneficial effects in the individuals to whom it was offered. Now, 